Hey, 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 what's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Theory Thursdays with yours truly, Max Wild. Uh, we're here for 343 TV, and uh, yeah, we're here every week. Uh, and I see some familiar faces. What's up, Andrew? Nice to see you. Hey, John. Nice to see you as well. Um, and whoever else is in the chat, how's it going? Uh, why don't you all let us know where you're calling from, where you're watching from. Andrew is in Halifax, Canada. John is in Rockaway Park, New York. I'm in Berlin, Germany. So we're all over the world. Uh, it's cool. Um, in some ways, uh, this whole... Um, this whole pandemic situation's kind of brought us closer. Um, yeah, so for those of you joining for the first time, uh, we're 343 TV, a daily live streaming at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, which is, um, I guess this week it's, you know, we, we actually changed the clocks earlier in uh, Europe. So uh, normally it would be 7 p.m. European Time, Central European Time, but this week happens to be six o'clock uh, Central European time. So that kind of messed with me um, a little bit um, at the beginning of the week. And I guess that would be uh, 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. So, uh, yeah, we're here every week. Uh, sorry, we're here every day. Uh, Mondays, we have tips and tricks with Ableton certified trainer, Claire Lim, a.k.a. Doltrick. She's awesome. If you haven't tuned in to her show every Monday, a uh, really dope show uh, focused on Ableton Live, but she covers everything music production-wise. Tuesdays, we have Tatro, our creative, creative director, YouTuber, producer, uh, who interviews different, um, yeah, different artists and different uh, members of the music industry. Uh, Wednesdays, we have uh, Lewis Beck with Hybrid Home Studios, where he walks you through his workflow of setting up his studio and uh, mixing digital with analog. Thursdays is Theory, so here you are today. Fridays, we have Abe Duque, and um, Abe's is a great show, uh, Production Basics. So if you're just getting into production, or if you're, if, if you're a veteran of production, uh, that's a great show. Um, this week, I, th I believe, uh, Abe is doing, he always has these like funky titles. So, uh, he's, he's, uh, uh, I have to check what his, um, his title is. Let me just, uh, check real quick. Oh, someone tell me, um, uh, I don't remember, but it was like the secret something or other. And I'm like, okay, uh, I guess, uh, I want to watch that stream. And then Saturdays, we have John Selway with uh, Selway uh, Techno Saturdays. Uh, so that's always dope. And then every first uh, Saturday of the month, which I believe would be this Saturday, am I, if I'm not mistaken? Is this, uh, sorry, first Sunday of the month, uh, we have feedback sessions. So I think that's this, sun this Sunday uh, with Atropolis. Yeah. So if you want to have your, your music heard, and um, and get some feedback from one of our instructors. Um, you, this Sunday is your chance. Um, cool. Let's see who's in the chat. We've got Luis. What's up? Um, did I say your name right, Luis? Louis uh, from Brooklyn. Uh, more G from Potsdam. All right, represent Berlin. Uh, and we've got Regine, one of our students. Hey, uh, hey, Regine. I believe you are in New York. Great. Also, um, this week's giveaway. So every week we have giveaways. Um, where, you know, we have uh, multiple sponsors who are very, uh, you know, thankful for to be supporting us and our community. Uh, uh, guys like Arturia, who uh, make this great, comfortable T-shirt and lots of other cool gear like... Um, this uh, keyboard, the Mini Lab. Um, we have Ableton, of course, that who is sponsoring us. Um, we had Bitwig sponsor us, Sensel sponsor us, uh, Beatport, um, and um, Splice. This week's 
giveaway is going to be a, um, I can't remember how many months it is. I think it's like a couple months. Is it three months or something? Three months of splice. It's definitely a splice subscription. I can't remember how many, uh, how many months it is. Um, Thomas will drop it in the chat. If you want to, ah, yeah. If you want to, um, enter that, uh, Thomas is going to drop the link in the chat so that you can enter for the giveaway and the giveaway winner will be announced on Saturday. Um, so yeah, just, uh, drop your name in there to, to enter. And yes, thank you. So Thomas just let us know that Abe's show is called the forbidden frequency revealed. I always love how, how dramatic Abe is. Uh, also if you, my, may have noticed I, I'm trying something different with my lighting today. So I'm going for the blue look. Cool. So let's get into it guys. Uh, we got it. We got a nice group here. Um, uh, we are going to get into some, um, reharmonization, um, which, uh, you know, let's just talk about that for a second. Um, you know, we talked a lot about melody. We talked about chords. We talked about bass lines, uh, music theory in general. Um, Reharmonization is when you take a melody and uh, you, so a melody comes with usually harmony, right? With If you think about a song, uh, you have a melody and harmony. And um, reharmonization is if you take those chords that come with a song and you put your own chords, right? You put your own harmony uh, and that's reharmonization. So Reharmonization is a really powerful tool which uh, can allow you to totally change the vibe of uh, a melody or an a cappella. Uh, let's say that you're working with an a cappella with some vocals. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna check out some vocals today, uh, and you want to let's say you want to remix them or you want to take a well-known melody and um, give it your own spin. Um, give it a different mood, a different color, right? Uh, there's so many ways that you would normally do it, right? If you want to change, if you want to take an existing melody or, or um, a cappella, what are some of the ways that we can, we can change the mood? Well, the obvious ones would be BPM, right? Change the beat, you know, change it from a broken beat to a straight beat or change the change it from half time to double time, right? Uh, those are all obvious kind of uh, go-to devices or, or techniques to uh, change the mood of a song or remix a song. But harmony is a lot more subtle, but it's equally, if not more, effective. So it's a, often an overlooked tool, and we're going to get into that today. If you have any questions, yo, 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 Brad, thanks for joining. If you have any questions about um, anything I do here or about reharmonization, please let me know. Anything about chords, anything about what I'm doing, please drop them in the chat. Um, cool. Also, it's obvious, but for those of you joining for the first time, please subscribe, all right? Uh, hit that red subscribe button, hit the bell key so that you're notified when we go live. And for those of you that don't know, we're a music production school in New York, Berlin, and online. Uh, if you like what you see here, you can learn more in our courses. We teach Ableton Live, Logic Pro, uh, mixing and mastering, vocal production, uh, composition and arrangement, uh, synthesis and sound design, and lots more. So uh, yeah, uh, you can check out all our courses on 343labs.com or 343labs.de for our German, uh, our German community. All right, let's get into it. So I'm just going to share my screen here. Uh, let's see what we got. Cool, cool, cool. So, uh, I got, I got live open. And um, I'll show you what I'm working with right now. I am working with. So I just right before this session, and I have to say, I 
one of the reasons I love these sessions is because it forces me and maybe my colleagues uh, can relate to kind of prepare something that I normally wouldn't prepare and think about something, a topic that I normally might not have thought about for a while. So I really like this. Um, but anyway, so I, right before this, I, uh, I downloaded a, an acapella from Splice because I was like, okay, well, let's, let's, um, let's go with an acapella um, and see what we can do to reharmonize it. Now, uh, the acapella that I picked was this one. They told me that I always had to be good. But being good always bring problems, is true. So I learn it, I learn it, and now I know I don't wanna play it, to play it, to play it. God, maybe I'm crazy, I'm crazy, but I'm not wrong, baby, it's true, yeah. What if I'm not good? What if I'm not good? If you never love me, but mm. what if I'm not good? What if I'm not good? If you never love me, but mm. what if I'm not good? What if I'm not good? If you never love me, but mm. what if I'm not good? What if I'm not good? If you never love me, but cool. So that's what we're working with. We got a uh, you know pretty um, a nice sounding a cappella. We got a verse in there. Uh, we got a chorus in there. And normally, well, first of all, I'll just show you. Uh, we had this a cappella. Actually, I transposed it. So uh, this a cappella originally. Um, was in the key of F sharp major, and it actually says F sharp major. Um, but since F sharp major is such a kind of not the easiest key, right? It has if if you are into key signatures and the circle of fifths and all that, it has six sharps, right? C uh, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, uh, A sharp, and E sharp. Six sharps. And that would be a lot of black keys. So what I did is I transposed it to G uh, just by going up a half step, right? So originally the the acapella was here. They told me that I and I went up one half step too. They told me that I cool. Now that acapella... Um, didn't come with any chords. So I actually took it a step further and I kind of, um, not only am I going to show you how to reharmonize it, but I guess I'm also going to show you how to harmonize it. Okay. So before you can reharmonize something, you have to harmonize something, meaning you have to add some chords. Um, I, the first thing I went ahead and did was I added a beat and I'm actually, I actually didn't add a beat. I, I used a beat from which I was using in previous weeks. So it sounds like this. They told me that I always had to be good. But being good always been problems is true. Cool. So, uh, you know, nothing crazy, uh, like a, a pretty basic uh, uh, trappy kind of uh, vibe going on there. And um, now the first thing you want to do when you are trying to find chords for an acapella is you need to figure out what the notes are in th that the that the vocalist is singing. So for the most part, when you listen to vocals, the the vocals are if if they're you know if they're moving up and down in pitch, as long as it's not like a rap vocal or something, they're moving up and down in pitch. They're they're singing a melody, and they're singing actual pitches. Okay, and quite often this is a misconception. It's like oh well they're just uh, you know they're just singing words. Words don't have uh, they don't have pitches. Wrong. They do have pitches. Okay, and. Vocalists are singing not only words, but they're also singing a melody. 
and it's important to figure out what that melody is. Now, with some ear training and, and, and kind of practice and experience, you can figure out what those notes are. So, for example, um, let me add a piano to this. So, um, there we go. So, I'm actually just going to mute this for a second. So, what's happening here is the melody is playing something like this. Right? So, it's kind of like playing the it's in G major. So it's playing notes from the G major scale. And you can write you can you know you can write this out, but I want to show you a little trick which I actually used as well to um, kind of what we call this transcribing, which is when you write down the notes uh, of a melody or a chord progression or anything. Uh, so in Ableton, if you're using Ableton, you can actually go ahead and click, right click on the sample. And in the case of a melodic sample, you can go convert melody to new MIDI track. Uh, you can also uh, convert harmony. You can also convert drums. Uh, since this is a considered a melody, um, you know, it's one pitch at a time, uh, we're going to select convert melody to new MIDI track. Hit that and you can see it's converting. Now, to be honest, um, technology is good, but it's not perfect. So you've always got to go back and check your ear as well, just to make sure that it's, um, that everything is correct. And we'll see that there, there there's, it's, it's pretty accurate, but there are a few mistakes, um, which we'll, which we'll see now when it's done. Uh, but it, it's okay. It, it gives us a really good starting point. So this is what it came up with. Let's see how how accurate it is. Um, let's just unsolo that, and let's just hear these two together. So let's compare. All right. So right off the bat, I can I can tell you that it, it played a wrong note to start with, right? It played a D sharp, and that should have been a D. But it's because, you know, uh, when, you're, when you're a vocalist, you can play notes that are kind of in between the pitches, and then the algorithm doesn't really know uh, if it's supposed to be... Because the algorithm doesn't know. You, we haven't told it that it's supposed to be in G major. So it, it I guess it... it went closer to the D sharp than the E. Um, so there were a few mistakes. Uh, I went ahead and I cleaned that up. So I'm just going to delete this. Um, but this is this is how you would do it, right? And you would kind of go through it and you would kind of figure out the melody. Um, and you would, you would kind of fix it. Um, and the actual correct melody, well, more correct should sound something like this. They told me that I always had to be good. But being good always bring problems is true. So I learn it, I learn it, and now I know I don't want to play it. There's a couple more notes in there, um, but when you're finding chords to a melody, you just want to hit the main, the most important notes, like the, the notes that are played on a strong beat, um, like beat one, let's say, at the beginning of the bar, or uh, notes that are held for a long time. Okay, you don't have to, a melody moves around a lot, and you don't have to hit every single note with a chord, right? Chords, uh, if you remember, don't move as fast as a melody, okay? If you have them move as fast as the melody, uh, things would get crazy pretty quickly. 
chords usually are played for one bar per chord or maybe two two bars um sorry two chords per bar maybe that's also uh, you'll you'll find that but quite often uh, chords are moving a lot slower than melodies so you want to just pick the main notes of the melody and harmonize those so uh, any questions about anything i just did uh, Black Jelly Beans has a question. Shoot, you don't have to um, wait for me to kind of, you don't have to raise your hand, although I do like that. Uh, I think I'm going to make everyone raise their hands. Uh, Black Jelly Beans, I like your manners. Let me know what, you th what, what your question is, and I will try to answer it. And anyone else that might have a question, please uh, just drop it in the chat. <clears throat> Okay, let's get moving. So, where am I? So what I'm gonna, uh, what I went ahead and did was I came up with some chords, and here are my chords. Um, and you guys can tell me what the chords are. These are the chords that I came up with. So I'm in G major. So I started with a G major chord, a G major triad. They told me that I always had to be good. But being could always be problems is true. So I learn it, I learn it, and now I know I don't wanna play it, to play it, to play it, God. Maybe I'm crazy, I'm crazy, but I'm around, baby, it's true. Okay, cool. So uh, let me just fix this a bit. I, these are just the same chords. I'm just going to quantize these um, since I forgot to quantize these. Um, and let's duplicate these and let's join them so that they're all in one. We can see them all together. And then let's check out. Let's join these as well. There we go. So I'm just going to run through these um, so that we know what we're dealing with. And then we can go ahead and start reharmonizing. And I see Black Jelly Beans has a question. So why do certain tracks sound so clean and all melodies crisp and clean and some songs and other melodies are muffled? Uh, okay. Um, why are some melodies uh crisp and clean i guess i mean it really depends on the song uh black jelly beans uh and it depends on the producer and the production but i th i mean in, in many cases or in some cases that might be uh an artistic choice maybe you want your vocals to be kind of um a little bit mysterious and and um uh, muffled and have effects on them like maybe a filter or like, you know, like what if I went ahead, like right now they sound clean, right? But what if I dropped an EQ8 on there and uh, and gave it like this kind of a vibe? Um, so let's do this. And then we're going to deal with something completely different. <clears throat> they told me that I always had to be good. But being who always be Now without. All right, so that's a, that's an artistic choice that, you know, um Black jelly beans, I cannot see you, unfortunately. I wish I could see, um, <laughs> I wish I could see everyone on YouTube, although that might be a bit creepy. 
Um, but uh, maybe in the future. Uh, but anyway, so this is an artistic choice, which, um, you know, uh, is supposed to create a certain vibe. Uh, so I guess my answer would be depends on the producer and the production and, and what they're trying to achieve. All right. So let's let's ch let's check out these chords. So um, did anyone figure out what these chords were? First chord was I've got a G major. Uh, let's just play them as well so that we can see exactly what we're dealing with. We've got a G major triad, then we've got a E minor triad. Now, first of all, let me just uh, kind of back up one second. We're in the key of G major, which means that the scale is G major, the G major scale. We've got one black key, which is the F sharp, right? And the chords that I can use, and this is really important when we, when we get into the reharmonizing, all the chords, at least for this, for, for what we're trying to do right now, are what we call diatonic, which means they are in the in the key of whatever key we're in, which is G major right now. So that means I can only use notes from the G major scale, and in this case, only white keys except for the one black key, which is F sharp. So uh, the first chord I can use is G major. Second, I'm just going to move up the scale. Uh, that would be A minor. This would be B minor. Just keep moving up the scale and playing that same shape of the triad. That would be C major. Then we get to the fifth note, or the five chord, which is D major. Then I get to the sixth chord, which is E, ma e minor. Then I get to the seven, which is F sharp diminished. That's the only diminished. And then I end up back at home base, which is G major. So, you know, there's the other thing that we need to... What's up, Nefertiti? Nice to see you. Um, that's the other thing that you that we need to bear in mind. Even though we're in a major key, uh, there are going to be chords that are minor that we can use. So, in fact, in, in, in every major and minor key, there are three major chords three minor chords, and one diminished chord. All right, so that's really useful. So useful information to know because it allows us to kind of change the uh, the the mood from, uh, let's say if we're in major, from bright to dark, uh, kind of for a second, if we move from a major chord to a minor chord. And if we're in a minor key, we could go from minor and throw in a major chord, and it would be, it would still be in the same key because minor keys also contain major chords. All right, if you guys are into this, definitely check out the composition and arrangement course, which teaches you all this music theory that I'm going over right now. Okay, so let's check out this. Um, you know what? Let's just deal with the first eight bars just to deal with a verse. I'm gonna just loop that. Oh, I forgot to turn on my loop. Uh, turn that on right here. All right, so I got the chords is super simple, right? They're just going from G major. All right, I only went, um, I actually wanted to go a bit further, eight bars. Well, they just do exactly the same thing. So I'm going G major to E minor to G major to E minor. And that's it. I've got four chords. Each chord is being held for two bars, all right? Um, depending on how, how you count the BPM, right? If it's if you count it here at... It's at 140, right? It says one, two, three, four. If you think of it like that, it's two bars. If you think of it at half time, one, two, three, four, then it would be one bar per chord. All right, so now let's change it up, okay? So this is, I'm going to call this original 
Let's spell that right. Chords. And now I'm going to... Also, drop in the chat. Let me know. Has anyone reharmonized a track or a melody before? And what's your experience been? When, has it worked for you? Or has it... Um, you know, what, what have your challenges been with reharmonizing? Now I'm going to duplicate this, going to turn this off and I'm going to make another, an empty, well, actually, no, I'm just going to, I want to keep that piano sound, but I will get rid of these chords, rename this. And this is going to be my reharm chords. There we go. So these are my reharm chords. Change the color on that. I like to keep things uh, color coded. And now, how about I'm just going to play around and try something different. Instead of starting on G, G major, what if I started in a minor key? Now, if I started in a minor key, and this is where the reharmonization comes in, you've got to think. What minor keys have the same notes or what what minor scales well really what 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 key is related to G major? Well, if you were here for my stream on relative major and minor, then you would know that the relative minor to G major is three half steps down. So that would be, you guys tell me, it's a relative minor of G major. Here's G major. There's G major. What's the relative minor? E minor, very good, John. So, all right, E minor is definitely an option. Let's see what E minor would sound like if I started on E minor. Would that work even? They, they told me. The other thing that you should do is you should listen, you should check out the melody. So this is why the melody is important. What are the first couple notes that the melody is playing and, and what are the most important notes in the melody? So uh, the melody is kind of writing this... Um, this E. Right, so going. So it's an E and a D, so I could I could go E minus seven. So let's go with that. Let's record that. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened there? Go back to... Um, no, nope, I wanted to add the minus seven. They told me that I always had to be good. All right, so that's E minus seven. That works. Uh, what is... Let's overdub instead. Uh, what's the next chord that I could use? So, if I'm gonna use seventh chords, I might as well use seventh chords all the way, right? So, why don't I go to um, C major seven? So C major seven is four half steps, three half steps, and four half steps. Sounds like this. That sounds cool. All right, so let's duplicate that because the, the next part is the melody is being repeated, so it'll work. Uh, I can just use the same chords. Cool, that works. 
And let's just see the difference to the original chords that I had in the first place. And let me know, do you like the original chords better or do you prefer the new chords? All right. So drop it in the chat. Do you write, like the original ones or the reharm chords? These are the major chords. All right, those are the original. So they have a more major -y sound, and now here's the more minor -y sound. They told me that I always had to be good. Being could always bring problems is true. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to add the bass to that. Um, so I'm going to add my bass. And I'm just going to copy these over. Remember, the bass needs to play. Uh, so this is the original bass. It's going to play the original roots. Uh, so I need to just delete. Everything that is not a root. Just gonna get rid of the top notes. Because the bass plays the roots. I'm only gonna go this far for the bass. Uh, this far. Uh, and now drop it down. There we go, and let's make sure it's playing the right chords. So I want it to play the original chords with the bass. There we go. Sounds a bit too loud. Let's bring that down. Let's actually drop that down one more octave. There we go. I think I'm hearing, nope. I'm hearing, every... ah, I'm hearing two basses. That's what was messing me up. Uh, okay, turn off that bass. They told me that I always had to be good. All right, so that's the bass with the uh, major chords. And now here's the bass with the in E minor. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to copy the chords over to the bass, get rid of the all the notes that are not the root. And drop these down two octaves. And turn this on and turn off the original chords and the original chord bass. So let's see what that sounds like. They told me that I always had to be good. But being could always bring problems is true. They told me that I always had to be good. But being could always bring problems is true. All right, so different vibe, right? Uh, let's see what uh, everyone likes uh, more. Uh, John likes the new chords. Okay, cool. Uh, Nefertiti likes E minor. Cool. So you guys are all liking the new chords. Uh, seventh chords, Nefertiti says seventh chords always <laughs> for the win. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's a different vibe. It's uh it's a it, it gives it more color, right? 
Uh, Brad is liking the reharm. Cool. Um, John says the new chords with seventh seem to match the key of singer better and blends to the mood. Nice. Okay. Definitely. I mean, you know, it's a it's a taste thing. There's no no wrong or right. But I'm 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 with you. I would, I'd probably, I probably have to agree with that. Um, Nefertiti says sometimes I accidentally reharmonize while singing along. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, Regine likes the new chords as well. All right, great. Um, let's let's dive a little deeper into this. So that was I was going E minor, right? So let us try something else. What if I instead of going to E minor, go to A minor? Okay. Now I can turn these off. Um now, A minor is technically the relative. So here's A minor. Um, uh, these are all off. Here are the original chords. Let's turn these on for a second. So again, here's our G major, right? Now, A minor is the relative minor of C major. But since C major and G major are so similar, it's gonna work. C major only has one, uh, C major has no black keys, right? No sharps or flats. And G major only has one sharp or flat. And that's why then they're, they're next to each other in the circle of fifths. And that's why they're going to work well together. So C major and G major, right? So in the same way, E minor and A, mi a minor will work. Now what happens if I start with A minor? Let's check it out. Um, so let's actually call these original chords. Ah, that's fine. Let's just call them originals. But let's try A minor. So let's call this A minor. A minor. And you guys tell me what, if you like the vibe of A minor. And we could try A minor seven, or we could try it just A minor. All right. So what I'm going to do here now is it's important. I need to check what the main notes are in the melody. So I go, I have uh, an E. Um, here we go. I have an E. Right, so now for the next chord, I'm on a B. So I've got to, I've got to harmonize that, that E, and I'm going to do that by uh, playing... Um, See how that A minor falls nicely underneath the E from the melody? Now I've got to find, for the next chord, I've got to harmonize this B. So not a B, it's a... Yeah, it is a B. So what, how can I harmonize the B? Well, E minor. So. Da ba 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 ba. So let's try that. All right, I'm gonna use triads for this. I'm not. I don't think. See, if I if I add the seventh to that, it's not gonna sound as dope. So um, where was that? A minor. Let's record it in real time. Thank you. 
Alright, see what that sounds like. Drop drop me a, a something in the chat to let me know if you prefer this new reharm over anything else that we did so far. Um, and I'm just gonna legato this. They told me that I always had to be good. The being could always be problems is true. They told me that I always had to be good. The being could always Okay, cool. Um, so that's A minor going to E minor. What do you guys think? Um, can you get into disco strings? <laughs> Dr. Chul. Uh, Max, I got a question. Is minimal production a producer's goal? Um, I don't know. Is minimal production a life goal? Is being minimal a life goal? Yeah, I guess it depends on how you want to roll through life and your productions. I think there are producers that like minimal. I think there's producers that like maximum. Uh, can't can't uh, generalize there. Disco strings. Um, I love disco strings, and um, oh, I'm smiling. Abe's uh, commenting on my singing. Thanks, Abe. I I, I try. Um, maybe we can throw some disco strings in there. Um, let's see what else we got. Okay. Uh, nobody, nobody said anything about the A minor chords though. Okay. So one last thing I'm going to do is what if we had like go A minor, E minor, and then we go to... Oh, now that would be crazy. I could reharmonize this, and instead of making that an A minor, I add an an F underneath it, and it becomes now it becomes an F major. And now let's get into some disco strings because someone just asked for disco strings, so I always like to take a uh, rise to the challenge. So. That actually reminds me of disco. So we've got the F major seven, and then how about we go to uh, just add a C underneath that, which makes it a C major seven. Just gonna quantize that real quick, boom. And you know what? If we're gonna do disco, let's do a disco remix. Um, we have like five minutes. Um, Let's add the seventh on top of that. I know I said it wasn't gonna be a seventh kind of thing, but. They told me that I always had to be good. The being could always bring problems is true. There you go, look at that. Sounds a bit disco. Now let's, let's, uh, Let's, let's change up the vibe even more than that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the beginning of this. Um, I'm going to take these two bars and I'm going to focus on them because guess what? They are what makes disco disco major seventh chords. Uh, and... of these and trying to get the rhythm here that that disco rhythm for dr Ch dr chill 
I'm getting messed up with the timing here. I think I gotta make this shorter. No, I gotta make it longer. Is it now? Duplicate that. There we go. Now we're now we're just going and uh There's our disco rhythm going. It's gonna extend this. Let's just continue that rhythm. And then we gotta find some nice disco strings for Dr. Cho. Let's just do this. Let's pick up the speed. Uh, and now let's find a disco beat. So turn off these drums. Find a little drum disco groove where do we find that definitely not disco anything disco in here it's funky in here Just search for disco. Nope. Where are my disco beats at? All right, we're gonna have to go for something housey, I guess. Um. Oh, that's cool. That'll do for some disco beat. That'll do my disco. Whoop that. And uh, what are we at here? Oh, we need to be at 100. <clears throat> All right, and now let's roll that out. Loop that, pull it out, and move that up to. All right, and now let's finish this off with the strings right on time. Oh, sorry, Dr. Chu. Uh, oh, cool. Dr. Cool, got it. Dr. Cool. It was definitely going to be cool after this. Um, let's find some strings, and then we'll be done. Uh, let's find a violin. Oh. Oof. No, definitely not going with that. Oh, 
Um, definitely not my favorite string, but okay. And we're going to play chords, right? So let's grab those. And grab these chords and put them in there. And Actually, let's get rid of all of this and let's go. What note do I want? Okay, I'm getting out of range here. Oh, that sounds nice. Check that out. Um, cool, okay. See what Ooh, what if I did this? Oh, I see I already got chords going here. So this is some type of a harmony here. Yeah. It's definitely not working for me. Sorry, not my lucky day. Check this out. Um, let's change this to one voice. And let's try this one more time. There we go. Now we're talking. We've got some disco in the house. Let's make these sustained. make these sustained as well. Dr. Cool, we are going to be rocking with these disco strings. All right, and let's put tons of reverb on these guys. And then we're almost done. Let's see if we can punch these up another octave. was the wrong instrument. This is what happens when you too much stuff going on. No, that is still where are my strings at? Uh oh here we go. Uh, did, are these not warped? Nope. You know what? I actually shouldn't whoop them. They're going to sound terrible otherwise. Let's do this. All right, and a, a Regina's saying I need an 808. Okay, fine. I will put an 808 in there for you. Um, 808. <coughs> Drum kits. Maybe not a drum kit. So now we're really taking this to the next uh, next level, kind of, right? <clears throat> and we don't want a kick on every beat. Oh no, I want it just on the first one.
All right, finally, I have to do this. Let's add the base. Can't finish this without the base, so I'm going to go F major to, so A minor to F major. It's going to paste right over this base. Get rid of these guys. And boom, boom, here's my base. Clip that. And drop it down at least one octave. Turn that base on. Duplicate that guy. It's not very disco y. You know what? I'm just going to copy this as is, that same rhythm. Put it in the bass so that it's really kind of playing that disco beat. Never thought I'd be doing this today. Let's displace these by one sixteenth note. And let's do the classic disco thing, which is like put every other note up an octave, right? Or down an octave. Well, so I want to do the same thing that I did here over here. My chords. are my my strings and my chords These are my reharmonized chords. Just to go over them one more time. A minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, and D minor seven. Oh, you know what? I actually wanted these chords now. Yeah, and I have to make them twice as long. Okay. So take rid of it, get rid of these. All right, and there we have it, guys. Um, let's see. Uh, we got some some action in the chat. Um, let's see if I can answer any questions. Uh, Andrew is saying, oh, right. Uh, you guys have got my sax coming up. Dr. Cool, Max, can you try a violin? All right, I, I think I did that. Uh, yeah, Andrew. Uh, wait, regarding minimal, some songs are so well produced that you don't notice how layered and rich they really are until you hear 
some elements that is uh, until you have some elements solo that is very true. So um, when you have a really great producer, they make it sound minimal, but that might actually just sound that way. And there's, there's actually a lot of stuff going on. Um, <laughs> Regine likes my disco kick. Thank you. Um, Andrew, go to YouTube, listen to the acapella of the weekend's blinding lights. And only then do you notice how rich the production is that takes mastery because on the single you can hear clearly is the vocal. All you can hear clearly is the vocal. Yeah. Um, thank you, Andrew, for sharing. I will check that out. Um, Dr. Cool, there's a lot of instruments going on causing dissonance. How do you clean it up with sidechain? Uh, I don't know. Are you referring to the track that I just made, dissonance? Um, I think I cleaned that up for the most part. Uh, there shouldn't be any dissonance going on if you're doing all the right um, theory stuff that I was kind of showing you. And as long as you're in key, there should be not a lot of dissonance. Maybe when I was doing stuff with the bass um, and it wasn't aligned properly rhythmically, but I, I hope to have cleaned that up. Uh, so rhythm can also create dissonance. Um, Andrew, uh, Dr. Cool says, Andrew, no dude, it's because they have packs that clean it. <laughs> Melody cleaners, okay, I haven't, I haven't seen those. Um, all right, uh, artistic choice regarding vocal production, blah, blah, blah. to the rapper's confidence, the lack thereof. Okay. We got a whole discussion going on. I, I, I guess I missed all that. Um, cool. I like that. Andrew Duke, check out Chuck D. Nice. Uh, dropping a lot of knowledge here, Andrew. Thank you. Um, blah, blah, blah. Mumble rappers. Okay. Uh, we got it. <laughs> All right, Mr. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for clarifying that the mic, my tracks are not, um, uh, not dissonant. We are going to call it a day here. I hope you guys learned something about reharmonization, um, uh, and what a powerful tool it is. Um, using harmony to change the color and the mood of an existing melody or a cappella. Again, we are 343TV at 343Labs in New York, Berlin, and online. Check us out at 343labs.com slash 343labs.de uh, for courses on music production, mixing and mastering, Ableton, Logic, uh, vocal production, all that good stuff. Music theory, we've got a uh, we actually have a music, a brand new composition and arrangement course starting this weekend. Um, so if you want to sign up for that, I, I think that starts, um, either this weekend or, uh, next week, check, uh, the dates on 343labs.com. That's the composition and arrangement course, which teaches you all, uh, the theory that we just, uh, kind of went over and, and a lot more. So that's a really cool course to, uh, get into. Um, what else? The giveaway is if you haven't entered your name, enter it now in the link in the chat, um, is a giveaway for a splice subscription. And, um, yeah, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, hit the bell key so that you're notified when we go live and tomorrow don't miss Abe Duque with production basics until next Thursday. I will see you guys soon.